Alrighty, good morning everyone. My name is Allie. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Welcome, good morning. We are going to be exploring a really cool kind of animal today. All right, we have one of them in here. Can't quite see it at the moment, uh, but we'll go over that in just a second. Now, we're gonna have lots of opportunities to, uh, to talk to each other. So if you would like to text on in, I have my friend Tiffany manning the computer right over here, okay? So if you want to text in the number right here, 562 Two eight six one eight three eight. You can text in any questions you have, any answers to any questions that I ask, any observations, any comments, or if you just want to say hi, that's cool too. All right, so that's for our live, uh, our live stream. But if you're watching when we're not live and you still have questions, that's okay too. But we prefer that you email us, and that's this email right here, live at lbaop.org. And that uh, we will definitely get back to you uh, by one of our educators. It's just a little easier for us. Alrighty, everyone. Now, we are going to be exploring a really cool animal today. And, hmm, I mentioned you couldn't really see it before in here. Hmm. Well, I'll give you a hint. It is related to these right here. Oh, look, our turtle came out. Our turtle uh, is saying good morning. It sleeps most of the day, so this is pretty exciting, everyone. <laughs> but we are going to be exploring the cousin of a shark called a ray. Has anyone ever heard of a ray? Yeah, maybe you've heard of them called sting rays. Yeah, well, we're going to try to refer to them. I'll do my best, too, because I sometimes just say stingrays, but I'm going to do my best to refer to them as rays today because not all rays have stingers. Hmm. So we're going to explore a couple different things about rays. Now, there are about 600 different kinds of rays. All right, now, some have stingers. Some don't. Some are really big, bigger than me. Some are really tiny, much smaller than I am. So what do you think makes a ray a ray? Just by looking at a stingray, how can you tell that, or a ray in general, see, I already caught myself once, just by looking at a ray, hmm, how do you know it's a ray and not, well, let's say its cousin, a shark? Hmm, let's take a moment and observe this ray right here. How do you know that it's a ray. If you have any observations, go ahead and text us in 562-286-1838. We'd love to hear uh, what you have to say. Hmm. Now let's go to, uh, let's see, uh, maybe a still picture of a ray to get a little bit better view of their body. Uh, my friend Tiffany, again, is not only manning the text line, she is also controlling all these cool things you see behind me here. So, oh, thank you, Tiffany. Alrighty, everyone. How do you know this isn't a shark or another kind of fish? What do you see that stands out to you? Hmm. Something that stands out to me is this tail right here. Whoa. Does everybody see that? Yeah, that's something that stands out to me. Whenever I see a ray, I notice, wow, they have a long tail. Have you noticed that too? Yeah, now, hmm, okay, they might have a long tail. What might they use that tail for? Hmm. Are they uh, using that tail to swim and using it back and forth like a shark? Hmm, not really, right? We were just watching that race swim a few moments ago and its tail was just kind of floating behind it, right? It wasn't really using its tail to push itself through the water. So what might it use its tail for? Hmm. Well, they can use it for a couple different things. They can use it, first of all, for sensory. They can kind of feel things like where they are. So if you can't see what's behind you, well, you have your tail back here, right? So you can use that to kind of gauge distance, uh, see what's behind you. Uh, but they also have, well, for some rays, stingers. Now, 
Maybe let's get a, can, do we have a picture of, of a whole tail? Let's see if we have a picture of a whole tail. Because the stinger isn't exactly where you might think. Now the stinger, sometimes we think of it being on the very tip of the tail, right? Hmm, not quite. They actually have it more near the base of the tail. So a base of the tail is kind of where the tail connects to the main portion of the body. Ooh, awesome. Thank you, Tiffany. So a lot of times we think of the stinger being down here, but it's also, it's actually, whoop, all the way about right here. Ah, so their stinger is actually closer to their body than it is to the end. Now their stinger uh, does have venom. Venom is something that if you get it on you, it can really, really hurt. Uh, it can, it can, even depending on the animal, it can even uh, really, really hurt you. It can even kill you. Um, but this, it has a stinger there that has the venom and then also has little kind of blades that help to cut in uh, to the other animal as well. So they can have just one stinger. Uh, they can have two. Uh, I know some of our rays here at the Aquarium of the Pacific have three. So they can have lots of stingers. Now, rays are very gentle. Now, they don't go around just stinging everything they want, right? No, rays are really gentle. Here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we actually have touch pools full of stingrays. So rays with stingers. And again, they're touch pools. You can touch them. Hmm, so why is that? Well, they don't use their stingers unless they feel like they're in danger. So if you were just swimming with a stingray, it's not going to come up and use its stinger and, and get you, right? They don't have that ability to regrow that stinger very fast. So that stinger takes a little bit of time to regrow. So if they were to use it all willy-nilly wherever they wanted, well, then they might not have a stinger for when they actually need it. So they only use their stinger when they feel threatened. That's why, so say you walk into the ocean and uh, you step on a stingray, right? Ooh, that's gonna hurt. It's probably gonna sting you. But that's because we're stepping on them. <laughs> we're in their home. That's why we always recommend kind of shuffling your feet when you walk into the water. It's called the stingray shuffle. Very cool dance move. And that'll let stingrays know, hey, I'm coming in the water. Uh, and they're going to feel your feet kind of shuffling in the sand. They're going to be like, "Woo! well, I don't want to be stepped on. I'm going to swim away. So that's a really cool thing to do. So they'll only really use their stinger if they feel threatened. Now, let's go ahead and go back to maybe a picture of a stingray underneath. Because stingrays also, they do not, ooh, I love this one. Stingrays also do not use their stingers to catch their food. Hmm, sometimes we think of animals using stingers to catch their food. Uh, maybe like, let's say, a sea jelly or a jellyfish, right? They use those tentacles in the water, kind of sting their food and bring it on in. Rays, they don't do that. So uh, they actually kind of find their food more near the bottom of the ocean for most rays, not all rays, but many rays find their, find their food near the bottom. So let's go ahead and look at some characteristics of this ray. So I noticed that, again, they had that long tail. We talked a little bit about their stinger. Now, what else do you notice? If you'd like to text us on in, our number is 562-286-1838. You can text in any observations or any questions you might have. Hmm. Now let's see, now this here is a blue spotted ribbon tail ray. It's very cool. It swims a little bit differently than some other, other rays. Some rays, they swim like this, <sighs> kind of like a bird, right? Yeah, kind of like that ray we saw in the beginning, kind of swims just with its fins like this. This one, do you notice how its fins are not very pointy? They're not really triangles, right? It's more like a big circle. Yeah, well, they do something really cool. It's a really fun word. You want to hear this word? They ungulate. I know, it's kind of a funny word. Can you say that word with me? Ungulate. Yeah, that means 
that they kind of do this. Ooh, can everyone do that with me? Ready? On your right. Nice, very cool. Uh, so that's, they move a little bit differently than some other rays. But what do you notice? They have a lot of things in common with say those rays we looked at before. Well, I notice their eyes are right on top of their body and their body, is it kind of up and down like this or is it flat like this? What do you think? Show me with your hands. Is it up and down like a building or flat like a pancake? It's flat like a pancake, exactly. They have very flat bodies because most rays, remember how we said most rays find their food near the bottom of the ocean floor? Well, that's because most rays lay on the bottom of the ocean floor. So if you're flat and you don't stick up, well, less things can see you. And that's a pretty good adaptation, a pretty good way to survive, huh? So they have that flat pancake-like body and their eyes, boop, are on top. Hmm. How could that be helpful? Having your eyes on top of your body if you were flat. Hmm, what do you think? Hmm, I wonder if we have a picture of a ray maybe on the bottom, maybe in the sand. Let's see, I'm, I'm putting Tiffany up to a hard task trying to find this picture. So we'll, we'll see if we can find one. But I want you to think if you were a ray, oh, ooh, this is a good one. Ooh, maybe we'll remove the questions real quick so we can kind of see a little bit better. <gasps> Whoa! This is pretty cool. What do you notice here? Ooh, yeah, I notice this ray is kind of making like an arch, like this <laughs> right now. So it kind of looks like a mouth right there. It's not a mouth, it's just kind of an arch. But its eyes are on top and the rest of its body is under the sand. Hmm. So even when a ray is pushes its body underneath the sand, its eyes are on top. So it can look around, it can look on top, it can look all around to see if there's anything that might look like it's dangerous. Or maybe if, uh, maybe if it sees a friend, right? So it can look around to look for other things. Because if its eyes were in the sand, do you think that's very helpful? What if you put your whole face in the sand? Can you see a lot? <laughs> no, not really. So these rays have adapted to have their eyes on top. So when they're laying down, they can actually still see what's around it. Oh, Khalid was wondering, uh, why does that stingray have blue spots? Oh, well, let's go back to that ray. Awesome, this is our blue spotted ray. Now, uh, blue spotted rays are found in kind of tropical warmer waters. So I'm not entirely sure why they have blue spots. Uh, it could be for a few different reasons. So tropical waters are typically a little more bright in color. So maybe they live a little more uh, near some bright patches of reef. Uh, sometimes animals with bright colors also have it as a warning. So sometimes animals with really bright colors say, hey, I'm dangerous, don't mess with me. All right, it's kind of like a warning. Uh, so that could it be it as well. And then sometimes animals have bright colored spots to pretend that they are dangerous, but they're not. I know, it's kind of silly. But if you look like an animal that says, hey, I'm really dangerous, don't mess with me. Well, do you think a lot of animals are gonna mess with you? If they think that you're dangerous, even if you're not? So there's a few different ways uh, that they can use this bright coloration. Um, I'm not entirely sure for this species why they have that bright coloration. Uh, that's a really good question, Khalid. There's lots of things that, you know, we're constantly finding out about, about different animals. And actually, rays are kind of understudied. Uh, that means that they don't have as many people studying them as maybe some other animals. So, Khalid, maybe, maybe you'll find out why they have these blue spots. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go back to their eyes, right on top of their body here, perfect. And they eat on the bottom. So, okay, if they have these eyes on top and they eat on the bottom, where's their mouth? Hmm, their mouth, what do you think? 
Is it up, up here? Or would it be underneath where their food would be? Ah, you got it. It would be underneath where their food would be. Oh, look at this cute little cow nose ray. This is my favorite ray because look at this face. It's so cute. So you can see this right underneath. We're looking kind of underneath. We're swimming with the ray and looking up at the sky. That's what we're looking at here. And this is its mouth right here. Now, ooh, that little line right there, yeah. Now, cow nose rays get their name from these little flaps that you see right here. So you might notice these flaps on this kind of ray, but maybe not on a different kind of ray, like that blue spotted ray didn't have those flaps. Uh, that's because these rays have what's called a cephalic lobe. Don't worry about, uh, about the wording there, but it's these little flaps right here. They kind of look like a cow's, and it helps them to kind of dig in the sand to find their food. So it's kind of like little, little, uh, little shovels on your nose to kind of get underneath the sand to find your food better. So that's not actually part of their mouth but this is their mouth right down here. Now, race mouths are on the bottom because a lot of them eat on the bottom. So what do you think they're gonna be eating? Hmm, what are they gonna be eating? Are they gonna be eating big, fast fish? Hmm, do those live on the bottom? Not really, right? Hmm, well, how about let's look at their teeth. I have their teeth here, and I want you to tell me what you observe about their teeth. All right, now this is their jaw, okay? So if you were to open up your mouth, <laughs> that's what a ray would look like, okay? Now what do you notice about their teeth? Are they pointy and sharp or are they kind of flat? Hmm, you can see right here too. Hmm, what do you think? Pointy or sharp or flat? I notice that they're kind of flat. I'm gonna put this right on up to the camera so you can see. So this is the lower part, this is the upper part. And they actually don't have big pointy teeth to eat their food. So if they were to eat a really huge fish, well, they'd have a lot of problem because it, can they kind of eat like this. <laughs> yeah, just as you can see right here. So they do have teeth, they're just flat. They have very flat teeth to help grind things up. So I kind of think of it like, use your, everyone, go ahead and use your tongue, don't use your hands, but let's use our tongue, and go ahead and feel the teeth in the back of your mouth. They're much flatter, right, than the teeth in the front of your mouth. So if you were to bite into an apple, would you chew the whole apple with just your front teeth, or would you bite it and then chew it with the back of your teeth? Mm-hmm. So when you eat harder things, we typically use the back teeth because they're flatter to help crush it. That gives us a big hint, everyone, to what they eat. They eat harder animals. Yeah, so they eat pretty hard animals. They'll eat things like shrimp that have that you know, nice exoskeleton on the outside. They'll eat things like clams. Clams have that nice shell, right? They can actually crush that shell and all the shell pieces come out and all that gooey animal in the middle, they love to eat that. So they eat kind of hard animals, hard invertebrates for the most part. Uh, and so they'll use these teeth kind of like this to flatten and flatten out uh, any shells or anything and eat the yummy stuff inside. Now, not all rays uh, eat on the ocean floor. Some rays, uh, like a pelagic ray, uh, pelagic means means not on the bottom of the ocean. It means in the water. So this kind of ray, uh, they spend a lot of their time. Oh, here's a nice manta ray. So uh, some different kinds of rays spend, you know, there, there's 600 different species of rays. So a lot, most of them do eat on the bottom, but there's some rays like the manta ray that does not really rest on the bottom. So this manta ray, well, first of all, let's start with what do you notice that's different? Do you see anything that might look a little bit different than those other rays we saw a moment ago? Yeah, I noticed it has these two kind of pointy things right here, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's kind of modified right here, part of its, 
part of its mouth. You can see its mouth is actually a little more in front too. Do you notice that too? So it's a little more in front of its face versus under. And then again, that's because of where they're found in the water column. Now manta rays, they get huge. I'm not sure what the biggest one can get to, but I know they can get to like 20 feet. Yeah, that's really big. And they're beautiful, majestic animals. And they swim through the water and they swim with their mouth open. So they have their mouth open like this, ah, uh, and their nice wings or their fins out. And they swim with their mouth open and collect lots and lots of tiny pieces of plankton. And these little things right here, that kind of helps channel the water whoop, into their mouth. Then they kind of filter that water out. So um, they, they filter all the little plankton out of the water and they use their gills to kind of filter that out. And then the water goes behind, but the food stays in. They can eat all of that. So they are very, very big, cool animals. And they do not have stingers. They are not a stinger. They are a manta ray. Ooh, let's see. This video of them swimming. Their tail looks pretty short compared to some of the other rays that we've seen. So see how they're kind of flapping their wings? I know, we call them wings. They're not real wings. They are their fins. But they swim with their mouth open and collect lots and lots of tiny pieces of plankton. Now, Juan was wondering, what is the rarest ray? So what is the ray that is most, most not seen? And that is going to be the small eye ray. Uh, it has the longest known migration, too. Uh, so lots and lots of rays are actually uh, in a lot of trouble. Uh, a lot of rays are being overfished. That means taken out of the water at a very, very high rate. Uh, one of them is the rhino ray. I think we have a picture of the rhino ray. Uh, the rhino ray is actually, I believe, very critically endangered. Uh, so there are rays that really do need our help. So uh, although there are some that are rarer than others, a lot of them really do need our help to help conserve them because they're being taken out of the water way too quickly that they can actually not reproduce uh, fast enough to keep up. Uh, so this is a rhino ray. So just one example of a ray that really does need our help. All righty. Now let's go back to, let's go back to a picture of a stingray. And let's keep looking at different characteristics that it has. So we talked a little bit about the stinger. We talked about the tail. We talked about the eyes on top. We talked about the teeth. <laughs> I love this. This is an eagle ray. Looks like it has a little nose sticking up. <laughs> pretty funny. What else do you notice? Hmm. Is there anything else that stands out to you, say, on the underside of the ray? I mentioned it a couple moments ago when we were talking about how the manta ray filters its food. Hmm. I notice these little tiny lines. Does anyone else see those? Let's go ahead and count how many there are. One, two, three, four, five. Five lines. They have five on one side and five on the other side. These are their gills. Yeah, rays have gills. So believe it or not, rays and their cousins, sharks, they are fish. Hmm, they look like your typical fish. No, not really. But all fish have gills. All fish have a backbone. So that's that kind of spine that we have. So everyone go ahead and reach around and you can kind of touch your spine. That's our backbone. So rays and sharks, they don't have a backbone made out of bone per se. So we have nice hard bones, right? You can go ahead and touch your arm nice and hard, right? Well, stingrays, they don't have any bones, but they still have a backbone. I know, it's a little confusing. Their backbone, their skeleton, is made out of something a little softer, something called cartilage. 
Have you heard that word before? Cartilage. Hmm. Do we have cartilage? We do, don't we? Do you know where? Hmm. Everyone touch an area that has cartilage. Remember, it's a little softer. Something that might wiggle. Maybe your nose or your ear. Yeah, so our nose and our ears are a little bit softer than, say, our, our arms, right? Or our elbows. And that's because it's made out of cartilage, just like their skeleton here. So they are fish. So all fish have gills. And their gills are right here, right on the bottom. Now, something cool that rays have is they have an extra little uh, adaptation that helps them for when they're resting. So when they're swimming, they can take in nice, clean water, take all the oxygen out of the water, and go right out of their gills. They can take in nice, clean water. But imagine if you were a ray and you were resting on the bottom of the ocean and you wanted to take in a nice, deep breath of water. Okay, ready? We're gonna picture that. <laughs> we're on the bottom. What got in? To your, to your gills, if you're resting on the bottom. Yeah, you sucked in sand, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And do you think they want to suck in sand? Nope, not at all. So they have a really cool adaptation. Let's go ahead and see the top side of a ray here. And let's see if you can see what that adaptation is. Does anyone see anything that kind of looks like a hole on the top of their bodies? Yep, I see it too, right behind their eyes. See this right here? This little hole, there's also one on this side too. Those are called spheracles. Those spheracles actually help the ray to breathe in nice, clean seawater while they're resting on the bottom. So just like their eyes can kind of point out above, above the sand if they're resting, well, they can actually take water in through those holes and breathe that nice clean water so they don't get all of that sand and gunk from underneath in their gills. Pretty cool adaptation, huh? Ooh, Jade was wondering, well, what's the most common uh, ray? Well, it kind of depends on where you are. So most common in the Pacific, we think might be a round ray uh, here off of our coast here in, in Southern California. Uh, the most common ray would be uh, Maybe a, maybe a round ray, maybe a bat ray. So it really does depend on where you are around the world uh, because there's different animals that live in different places. That's a good question, Jade. So uh, it does depend. Oh, here's a bat ray. These are very common off our coast here in Southern California. Now, something I like to point out with these rays that you can see really, really, really well is something cool about their coloration. Hmm. What do you notice about their coloration? What color is their back? Let's look at this one here. This one's swimming just like this. What color is your back? Yeah, it's like a black, a dark color, right? Now this one is flipped up towards the camera, posing for us. What color is its tummy? Mmm, uh-huh, it's white. Exactly that is actually a really cool adaptation. And that's actually something called camouflage. Can you say that word with me? Camouflage. Yes, camouflage can come in lots and lots and lots of different kinds of things. It can mainly be, uh, a lot of times we think of it when an you can't see an animal and it kind of blends in. Maybe the colors are the same, but this is actually a form of camouflage too, this coloration pattern. And this is called counter shading. All right, so a lot of animals in the ocean actually have this coloration. One of my favorites being penguins. Do you notice? Kind of looks like a pancake penguin. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It has that dark back and that light belly. So it helps them blend in to the open ocean because, well, if they're swimming and you're looking down, well, that dark back is going to blend in with the bottom of the ocean. Whereas if you're underneath the ray and you're looking up, then that light belly is coming in with the sunlight or the moonlight from above. 
So it kind of works both ways. It helps them to be able to avoid predators, but also to sneak up on their food as well for a lot of animals. Alrighty, everyone. Well, we talked a lot about rays today. That was so much fun going over some of their adaptations, like their stingers, how they eat, uh, how they breathe even. Now, if you have any other questions, go ahead and email live at lbaop.org. But thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully you'll have a wonderful weekend and we'll hopefully see you next week. Bye, everyone.